Hello everybody, I'm on vacation in Maine. For those of you who are geographically challenged, just know that Maine is the pointy part in the upper right-hand portion of your map. Just think blueberries, black bears, and President Bush. Which President Bush? All of them. They have a huge compound here that looks just like this. I've been here many times before, but mainly for vacation. Get it? Mainly? I'm cracking myself up. So I'm supposed to be here connecting with family, getting a tan or frostbite depending on the weather, or maybe I'm supposed to be building one of those little ships in a bottle. I don't know, but the problem is if you're like me and you're cursed with photography, you, anytime you come on a vacation like this, you always feel like there needs to be more, that you need to be making something, that you need to walk away with something creative. So I've come to Maine probably 10 or 15 times. And I've come here with a lot of different filters over my head. I've come here as a Hasselblad photographer. I've even walked around as a Hasselblad photographer shooting what I would call cliche pictures. But cliche pictures sometimes are exactly what we need to sort of get over the hump when we're working somewhere. I've also come here as a Hasselblad photographer shooting time-lapse pictures. I've also come here as a Leica photographer shooting black and white 35 and color 35 of my family members I've also probably come here as a Polaroid photographer. I've come here as someone who keeps a journal. I've come here now as somebody who's attempting to make YouTube films, believe it or not. That's the sure sign of a midlife crisis. All I'm saying is I've been here many times with many different hats, and I always feel like I need to walk away from a trip like this with something in hand, which is what I wanna to talk to you about today. Is this backlit and moody enough for you? I sure hope so because I literally have nowhere else to film in this little room. So how do you go on vacation and not drive your rest of your family members crazy, but still walk away with something good photographically, something that makes you feel like you're building on something you've started or continuing something that you started in the past? So I have a couple of tricks for you. The first one is called the vignette. And the vignette means that I plant myself in a specific location. It could be downtown in the plaza. It could be along the wharf where people are going to the beach. It could be anywhere. And I basically sit and I wait for someone to start talking. Not me or someone in my party, but some stranger. And I listen to their conversation and I cherry pick parts of the conversation while I'm making observations around me. It could be about details. It could be about light, etc. Then I combine the conversation with the details and I look for a single photograph that sums up that little moment, that little vignette. And what it does is they're almost like little chapters of a book. They're one page chapters. And after, you know, throughout the day, you might be able to do two, three, four of these a day. And if you're on vacation for three, four, five days, you've got a nice little body of work. The second thing you can do is put yourself on a clock. Give yourself a timeline. Say, I have 10 minutes to make a photograph. And wherever you are within that 10 minutes, you have a hard out and that's it. So I did this yesterday in a pouring rain with two family members waiting for me in the car with the windshield wipers going, looking out the front windshield, going like this at me, meaning let's go, dude, let's go. And so I happened to be along a harbor. There were boats. There was a guy with a giant tuna who was cutting sections of it and chefs were coming to look to see if it was the kind of quality. There were a million pictures to be made and I was on a deadline. Now, why does this work? It works for me because I started my career as a photojournalist and I started working in the news industry. I was a newspaper photographer and every single day you had deadlines. And the thing about a deadline when you work for the media is you do not miss a deadline. If I had missed a deadline back in those days, I was told there was no reason for me to come back to the paper. It was that big of a deal. Now, the weird part is that sounds terrible, right? You're like, I don't wanna be under that kind of pressure but you learn to not only like that kind of pressure, you kind of get addicted to it. And what it does is it makes you perform. You forget every single thing else and you say, I literally have 10 minutes or I'm gonna be like stealing cars by 5 p.m. because I'm not gonna have a job. So put yourself on a clock, whether it be five minutes or 15 minutes and it's a hard out, it'll train you and you'll appreciate it. Okay, another tip, mix your media. For me, I'm a journal keeper, right? I've kept this forever. Thanks Charlene for the journal. So I write in this thing every single day, right? It's compulsive, it's manic, I admit. I've been doing this for years and years and years. I glue in maps, I do all kinds of ridiculous things. And yes, I go back later and I look at them for you. Inquisitive type, oh look, blurb, my employer. Some of you can illustrate, some of you can sketch. You're not just photographers. So mixing media, whether it be writing or illustration or watercolor or whatever it is, is also another little way of catching little sneaks, little opportunities to be creative. It's not always time that you can photograph. Last night by eight o'clock at night, it was dark. I'm isolated out here at this little motor lodge that I stay at. 
and I could walk into town and maybe try to find something to shoot, but most often I don't wanna walk into town and see if I can find something to shoot, but I still feel like being creative. So taking notes, writing overheard conversations, and doing all of these things help you round out a story. The other thing is you remember 80% of what you write down, including all the details. And oddly enough, the human brain was not designed to record intricate detail like that. The brain records a tapestry of information, and sometimes it's accurate and sometimes it's not. So mix up your media, bring some pens, bring some watercolors, bring a crayon if, you're, if your artistic level is where mine is at, and widen out your media choices. All right, my last tip is to choose a mini theme. Now, a mini theme could be something super simple and obvious, like intersections of where different materials meet, or it could be objects of a certain color. What a mini theme allows you to do is build a body of photographs. So instead of having a bunch of random images from a trip, you've got something that sticks as a cohesive body that then you can then edit and put into a print project. So what I'm gonna do is continue what I started doing in Albania a couple of months ago. So Albania to me was a brand new thing. It was a body of double exposures. I'd never done double exposures before, but now I'm in the habit. And what I realized coming back here to Maine was most of the people and places that I'm photographing, I have already photographed many, many times. I've done it with the Hasselblad the Leica, the Fuji, whatever, but I've never done double exposure. So I'm looking for a way to add something new, a little twist to what I'm doing. And because my brain is now so in tune to the double exposures, I'm just gonna continue doing it. Now, for those of you who do end up shooting Fuji cameras, you'll notice how easy the double exposure situation is because the double exposure dial, and I'll highlight it here conveniently for you, is so easy to find and it's so easy to toggle between single frame and double exposure. It's a nice feature that they have built into their cameras. So anyway, my advice is to choose a mini theme. It allows you to build a cohesive something instead of just a bunch of random. Good luck with that.